My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to the Monster Train. It's time to play Melting Remnant and Hellhorns. Uh, wait a second. No, I forgot. Didn't turn the right thing on. Okay, well, we'll try this anyway. Uh, Talos and then Fell. Both of those are defensive. There's the armor stack. Yeah, armor stack with rage. And then, okay, cool. And then there's Seraph the Diligent at the very end as well. We got double Wicklash, single Wicked Blaze. Double fledgling into the base deck. I would love to see a burn bright rector flicker here. Volatile gauge. Oh, baby, hellhorn banner right there, and there's a hellhorn banner down here too. So there's, oh my god, there's three attempts to hit a consumer of crowns. And we gotta try, right? I think I'm gonna go for Accumulator here. We may end up hybridizing out of Accumulator. Number of centimeters units gain plus four. Unit draft as well. Uh, I'm semi regularly gonna be able to hit the torches, take out the backliners. Uh, I'm gonna need to do that with a Rector Flicker at the same time. Probably gonna be able to chomp in the front line as well. Okay, we should be fine. Unless we get like real awful costs, we should be okay. Pop that speed all the way back up. Okay, we want to set up as low as possible as well. Glad I got that kill there. Um, hmm. Interesting. Really would like to be able to play more than one thing. Feels like that would be fun. A little worried about this bottom floor, I'll admit. Okay. Uh, torch the back line, and we get almost all the way to lethal. We're gonna take another 14 damage here. Wait, that one on the top floor slayed. Wow. My HP. It's fine. It's fine. It's a unit draft. It's entirely possible. It's like the unit draft literally just wins us the game as soon as we take it here. Um, hmm, skip that one. Original battle looks pretty good <laughs> with a Voltwa Gauge specifically. Okay. I think all I need to do is go to the Merchants of Steel and look for upgrades to the the crown of consumers that make me happy to hell vent it. Just cut two other cards from the deck. You don't really want to large stone it if you can avoid it. See the remnant unit here. Purge that. I'm gonna re-roll here. And then if I don't get a great hit. Five off! Five! Uh, <laughs> uh, it uh, could have cost anywhere from like 100 to 110. No, what's enemy unit sent to its spikes? Three. Um, I need the money. I need the money because I'm about to go to another merchant. I need the ability to reroll there. Set you up on the top floor so I can make sure I get the money. It turns out it wasn't necessary, but I'm glad I did it anyway. We should be pretty comfortable on that bottom floor. Yeah. 
Okay. Whew. We score our extra money. I'll take a modeled entrapment. It's just high cost enough to be real good here. Come on. Oh, endless is not what we're looking for. Quick is fine. It's quick and multi-strike we're looking for. Obviously, having missed the multi-strike already. Demon friend. Another big unit. Yep. Seems good. Make this one tanky. Put it in front of the consumer of crowns. All seems good to me. Eh, it doesn't need the plus 10 now. Hmm. I think we just want a monster rail spike and take a... I mean, take an anything out of this deck, basically, at this point, right? Uh, get rid of the drag, I guess. We may end up going capacity gem after the first fight, because I still haven't found hidden passage or any some such. Tell us games rage on slay. It's fine again. Okay. So my top floor is just Recta Flicker with consumer crowns behind it, and we're trying to scale that way. I may want to just start using torches to take out clergymen. Or at least take out one. Actually, I'm going to stand by that as well. Let's get Shiny Steward out here and just move two from the field there. Hopefully we get a torch this turn. Single torch, got it. I present a lot of extra health that the Rector Flicker gets to keep. I can deal 100 damage to the backline if I'm wanting with the torch. That's pretty good. <laughs> Seems pretty likely we end up killing the backline first here. Okay, Mold Entrapment gets to really keep him down. All right, we should now be comfy. Don't want to call my shots too early, but uh, we really ought to be comfy. We're missing some harbor trees on the top floor. Which thankfully ought not matter. Yeah, demon friend, I guess. I'm going to kill the backliner there, allowing both of those units to get to the top floor so that I have the ability to get the Forge Disciple uh, and, uh, yeah, both of the Harvests, rather, on that top floor. And that should make us even more comfortable here than we already were. Come on, one horns. We don't really put armor on units. Formless Child is also pretty bad here too. We're eventually going to need to scale defense somehow. Why isn't uh, why isn't reinforce available as an option? Because Rector Flicker is what we're doing it with. Rector Flicker is already going to get there by itself. Fine. Uh, definitely skip that too. And here it feels like the Demon Friend just does go on its own floor and we have the Rector Flicker standing in front of the Consumer of Crowns. We need Multi-Strike and the Consumer of Crowns and then try and go from there. So honestly, it's probably energy. Uh, or draw. Mm, deranged Brute. I would love that for the scaling damage, but I think we're past that point in the game. Let's have these two dregs out here. Hellbutt and Consumer Crowns. That could have had multi-strike. Hmm. 
This has got quick. Uh, number 10 units gain six additional damage. This should definitely be our fight. Can even set up on the bottom floor the majority of the time here. Okay, capacity was decreased elsewhere. That's fine. To flicker and a consumer of crowns. Then we'll set up a demon friend here. And then we'll set up consumer of crowns on the very top floor as well. Thankfully, we also had exactly enough to get that torch off. Or enough torches off, rather. Anything else? No? Okay. One. Two. Just gonna get the extra cards that I don't want to cycle back out of the deck. Also, torch you and then immediately molten entrapment just to make sure that we don't have to take any extra damage on that floor. On multi strike. As soon as we find multi strike, we've already won. Uh, and Golden Smoke is great. Especially if I manage to double stack that. Hard pass here. Can't double stack that until we find the correct multi strike. Hey, found it. Endless? No. Uh, large stone? I could large stone one of them. I could also quick the demon friend. Just don't want to endless. Double cut is easily the dregs here. Now that we have that upgrade, I'm actually pretty happy to start going back to... Ooh. <gasps> Maybe I actually go and just dupe another consumer crowns and cut this one. I, I I honestly think at this point we've already won. I, I legitimately believe that. Uh, no boss enemies gain, multi-strike. Okay, there actually could be a bunch of sixpence in front. So ideally I set up on floor two here. Perfect. Not the multi-striking one. Demon friend on the bottom floor just for a single removal. Hmm. Well, this sucks. We're actually going to miss out on the collector. Fine, though. Let's torch the back liner there a bit. Maybe even whiplash you. Put the front liner down. Mm -hmm. Just trying to assure that I get as much growth on this floor as possible. I also really like the engulfed in smoke here. Setting up in the next turn. Easy kills across the board. Let me go for the engulfed in smoke and pass, and then just hope I get engulfed in smoke again, and we do. Got him. Mm, whenever a card consumes played, deal 30 damage to the front enemy unit. I am happily going to take the skip over that. And another engulfed in smoke? It's my birthday? Didn't think it was my birthday, but apparently it's my birthday. I've got a three floor plan at the moment, so the Inferno is actually pretty hard to take. Not sure I need it. There's so much that could happen over here though. 
And it's extra health. Unstable Vortex. So I'd be going Unstable Vortex here to another Unstable Vortex over there. Yeah, it's, it's too good to turn down. Extinguish ability is triggering an additional time. That is not useful in my deck at all. Two minutes get plus one and burnout. That's also not useful in my deck at all. I'm going to take the money there. Not super happy to have had to do that, but that's okay. I'll dupe the good consumer of crowns. I will take the bad one out. The reason I'm doing that is because it's a banner unit. I don't want to draw it early if I have the option to draw one of the other ones either. Uh, also, I don't have space to play all three of them because I have no ability to overstack or uh, ascend or descend or any such that would actually affect it. Savvy. I'll cut another shiny steward and then we're going to move down to the double removal here and go for the shiny stewards. The merchant of magic is going to be for cost reduction on the two stealths as well as possibly looking for burnout or holdover on either of them. Then literally I just need other spells left in deck so that I can affect those in the Seraph fight. Okay. One. Two. Three. You simply love to see it. I'm just gonna engulf and smoke two times on this floor. Trying to make sure I set myself up the best chance. Guess I get the two shiny suits playing on the top floor as well. It's, it's just smoke from here on out. Mate, I don't mean to blow smoke, but... Uh, here we go, eh? Scene cards in the deck. Uh, again, just smoking, smoking, smoking. Uh, happily get the first thing up on the other floor. We would just remove from the cycle. I'm also going to daze you for a couple to uh, more turns because I feel like that's going to be most impactful. And then, yeah, even in golf more. Get him. Speed run. Mm. Still skip. Is it capacity gem now? It gives me the ability to put a consumer of crowns behind one of the demon friends. Gives me the ability to throw fledgling imps on that floor. Also make sure that Rector Flicker and that are resilient to the size decrease. Yeah, I'm actually going to take the capacity gem here, literally just for the resilience. I want to make sure that I can set up on the bottom floor if I need to, because the diligent can put some bad stuff in my deck that I would prefer not be in there. Let's double stack. Decrease the costs. Plus 10 on... I could do that on a model entrapment pretty happily. 75 damage. Roll this. Oh, over. Uh, well, if I put that on the Mortal Entrapment, I can just kill the boss easily. But if I put it on the Engulfed in Smoke, I kill the boss as well as uh, all of the floor. So I feel like that's a pretty good choice there. Uh, we got more porches. Porches. We got more porches. Wait, good mate. Here. Great time. Skip. We've got more porches, sir. So let's get rid of the two shiny stewards. I'm leaving the spells in the deck, especially at this point, because of the Seraph the Diligent. Then upgrade our champion to scale 20 HP every time we kill an enemy on its floor. Okay, so in this area, we've got another dupe. And we got the Merchant of Magic for the double cost reduction. So I'm probably going to go like cost reduction on the Mortal Entrapment. Cost reduction on a torch or some such, maybe. And then dupe the... Dupe the super upgraded engulfed in smoke. Yeah, that's almost certainly what we're doing. We'll see what relics we find there. That could modify things for us. Non-boss enemy unit center with spikes? Fine. Um, two. So we take 10 damage every round on the consumer of crowns. Wow. Can we not do that? I don't think we can do that. 
I I actually think that would uh, probably cost us the run. Wow, you, you found it. You found my kryptonite. Mm. Let's set up on the bottom floor. Rector flicker, get some crowns. Um, Fledgling up in the front line as well. Actually, I should probably just set up the demon friend here so that I have the... Yeah. So that I have someone that can stand in front of the consumer of crowns, should it need one. Again, I'd love to kill the collector if I could, but... Gotta focus on my HP first. I mean, like, look, I can kill that target and then we get 62 damage to the backline, but it's going to be the same as if we didn't do that because next floor they die anyway. Intentionally here, making sure the frontline dies, literally just get more harvest. Okay. Keep engulfing that smoke. We got... 12 stacks of it. Seems like that'll be good. Uh, let's go for 16. Nice. You love it when the game gives you a gift run like this. You really, you, 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 you just do. Take that easy skip there. And again. Guaranteed to be going over this side as well. Power remains and... Units gain an extra upgrade slot. Rude. Flicker's liquor matters maybe a little on the first turn, but that's about it. I'm going to reroll. <laughs> Seven energy on the first turn. Conserve between battles. God, I wish I could take both. And then I'm probably going to take conserve energy between turns. There are some turns that I just will not have anything that I can do with the extra energy that is useful. Uh, and that's exactly... Wait. Haven't collected all rewards. Because I didn't visit the Merchant Magic? Whoops. There's another double stack here. I wish I'd looked at that. Probably dropped it on the Merchant of... I, I don't know. Because it's... It, days, enemies won't hit you. Turn of Stealth, enemies won't hit you. Both of them at the same time? Whichever is higher, the enemies won't hit you for that amount. Right? So it, you don't want to use both. They... they it, it, it's like Lifesteal and Divine Shield in a way, right? And damage shield rolls, sir. Get flicking. And then use the cheaper one there. Hold. Demon friend happily goes to the top floor. These ventral shards are each one damage. I may actually just straight up ignore them. I can't play Engulfed in Smoke as well as uh, another spell, so I have the ability to actually keep it, so I just won't. I could play one Vengeful Shard in order to save one HP, but lose two energy that I would otherwise retain. Uh, I'm going to retain the energy, thank you. Also don't love this turn. I'd love to be able to use the Whiplash. Seems like it'd be real fun. Finally, we get a Consumer of Crowns down again. These are engulfed so bad for us constantly. Still gonna get the... Scourges that get added out of the deck. 
Four turns remaining. Oh, thank you. Finally, I got engulfed in smoke that's playable. Pulled off. Many engulfed in smokes that are playable. Love it. I'm gonna stun this target for a bunch of time, try and save myself some HP. Double stack. Hold over. Double stack. And torch there also saves the consumer of crowns for another turn. Ultimate looks like it'll save some HP. Okay, it'll give us a break in just a second, but I don't actually really want that break. I oh, know it's just straight to the final wave. Thank heck it's straight to the final wave as well because we were just bleeding HP at the very end there. Not being able to set up the uh, the consumer crowns both on the first turn was rough. Definitely rough. Woo! I was pretty sure I was going to be able to bleed as much as I needed in this fight. I did not think it was going to get this close. I thought we were about... Probably going to end on 40. Most likely. Very, very, very glad that went as smoothly as it did, though. All right. Win streaks back up to one. Winnings on the menu. We've also got next. Our final combination we need to do is Rector Flicker and any Stygian guard. That's what we're going to be focusing on in the next episode. Until then, though, I'm going to hit this run summary, hit the generate challenge, and say that my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train Herzl's Workshop. There's a playlist in the description down below with all of my content of the game, past, present, and future, as well as, now included down there, is season four of The Ladder Streak, which just so happens to be on Monster Train. We're rotating around uh, each of the starters. So that is to say each of the non-exiled starters and then each of the exiled starters with a random allied clan each uh, and ascending each time through the Covenants. Um, obviously, Covenant 1 through yeah, up to 10 is going to be pretty simplistic. However, thankfully, that gives us the space a lot of the time to talk about the game, which I think is really important, especially because in the in specifically Monster Train, uh, Teak and I have more differentiated play styles than we do at least at the moment in STS. Uh, so there is a lot of ground to cover there, and it really gives us the space to do so. So again, that is going to be linked in the description down below. Uh, I think it's just bit.ly slash ladderstreak as well for the uh, playlist that it contains all of them. But for the moment, hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.